Yeah, so we sat in the middle of Faversham Creek for about um, for a few hours, and then uh, he said, "Do you want to go back in?" <laughs> I said, well, I don't want <laughs> we haven't done anything yet. <laughs> oh dear. In mean, the time it had taken him to unpack the boat and get it out into the middle of the river, I um, could have flown to France and back. And there's a lot of similarity in terms of navigation, certainly, uh, with uh, flying and uh, sailing. The difference is the speed. Where's the VOR? Let me see it. We're probably going to go straight over it again. I'm going to go right. It's at the actual VOR is over to the left. It's indicating as over to the left. And I'm going to turn right because I'm. When you're looking for anything, you always look for it at the left-hand window, obviously, because you're you're sitting on the left. it's still five miles away so I'm probably being a bit premature here now you know why I fill up with fuel don't you somewhere. There it is, I can see it. This motorway you can see there is the A2. It's the main artery into Kent. <clears throat> I have to watch my altitude a bit. So if you drive into Kent, then uh, you'll you'll be going down there. And then this is the uh, north to south link with the M25. And the M25 is a massive, great circular motorway that goes around London. Now, because I know where we are, because I can see the um, the VOR, which I'll just point it out to you, it's here. I'm pretty certain that uh, we're finished with that. So I'm going to press X and switch over to the Mayfield VOR, which is one that's not working, is it? One that's not working, I don't know. Anyway, I'll switch over manually. And um, what it's going to do is it's uh, we're going to have to get a different uh, bearing off of that. Now, that's, we want the triangle pointing upwards, don't we? So. There we are. so that's telling us we need to steer about uh, 225 for Mayfield. There's the VOR down there. Can you see it? It's little service road and that's the Kent County um, showground down there you can see the um, show ring and uh, where everyone parks where all the stalls are and that field there is the one that they use for parking what happens is you remember I was saying about the um, prevailing wind being a southwesterly and uh, obviously we're flying southwest, so the wind would come up towards us, <clears throat> and it's driven up the hill here. There's a there's a little bit of a hill here. You can just see it down there, and uh, it's quite frequently um, foggy here, 
quite frequently where it's not foggy anywhere else it's foggy at uh, Detling and there you can see the junction of the I think it's the 299 or the 229 it's a 229 uh, and it's merging into the um, M25 here now <clears throat> we want to turn left because um, remember the Mayfield leg was to um, help us avoid Gatwick and uh, has a severe negative impact on your flying ability if you infringe the Gatwick airspace. They tend to notice. So, and the other thing is um, the Mayfield VOR, if you remember, was right on the corner of the Gatwick airspace. So really if we're going to make any errors in flying to Mayfield, we need to make them towards the left because we make we make an error and just fly a couple of miles to the right we will be in the Gatwick airspace and the other thing you'll notice is that I'm um, descending because I am going to go down to 1500 feet and I'm going to do that so that I can get under the Gatwick airspace that'll do so I'm still right of where I need to be because this needle is still telling me that the, the actual track that I should be flying is is to the left and remember I said to correct what you do is you take 30 degrees left of this here so that'll be about anywhere between 200 and 230 and you fly so you fly 30 degrees to the left not not you don't turn 30 degrees to the left of what you're flying because you, you can be flying in any direction whatsoever and still get this indication you need to you need to fly 30 degrees to the left of of the, the track that you're trying to pick up now we've picked that up so now I can turn back on and pick it up again now flying with um, landmarks and knowing where you are, I mean, I'm in territory really I don't know where I am now this is not my backyard. Detling Hill is about, about as far as I go. So I'm flying now just with nav aids. And looking out the window you can see why you need them can't you? Because you know th this is just fields isn't it? You couldn't navigate really by means of fields. Makes me, the first thing that you think it is funny when you fly is that um, you realise that the, the south of England well, the whole of England, in fact, is not as built up as you thought it was. And that's because as you drive around in a car, all you see is buildings and roads, buildings and roads. You're very, very tightly restricted in, in what you see. If you had a tank, it'd be different, wouldn't it? Drive where you like. Get a much more um, representative view of the countryside. You'd be able to say to yourself, there's quite a bit of green here as you went along in your tank. But... Um, when you get up in a plane you think, hmm, there's a lot of fields here, and there are, there are of, you know, and you consider all the fuss there is over planning applications, we could probably build four times as many houses as we've got, and, and we'd still be alright. Bit of controversy there on the FS Derek channel. Send them all back, that's what I say. Now that was a turning point, so there's a mast ahead here, I don't know if you can just see that, so there's some sort of mast here, we we'll have to keep an eye out for that, we don't like masts, they tend to reach up into the sky and pluck hapless planes out of the air. So I'm going to do a quick Frieda check. So F is for fuel, so we've got plenty of fuel. Now let's just check if the fuel pump's turned off. Oh, so is everything else. Let me turn the taxi lights off. We turn the strobes on. Actually I don't think that there are strobes on this plane. So 
so fuel and fuel pressure and uh, oil temperatures and pressures are fine the vacuum's fine the amateur's charging okay the fuel flow's fine exhaust gas temperature we could possibly lean let's see if we can lean it a bit let's just pull it slightly yeah a tiny bit 2000 feet 1500 feet I mean really there's probably not much less oxygen here than there is normally now we're 14.7 miles away from Mayfield which as I said is the corner of the Gatwick zone I don't suppose we're going to see much you can see the North Downs there there's another mast, isn't there? There, see that mast there? Nasty mast. Let's stay down. Yeah, plenty of places to land. That field over there would be a nice place to land, wouldn't it, if we needed to? Well, Never mind about needing to land. We're going to get escorted by jet fighters if I don't stay low. The rules of the air say that you have to stay at least 500 feet away from any person, vehicle, vessel or structure. And they also say that you have to fly high enough to be able to land clear of any um, anything that might uh, be in the way, such as a town. And they also state that you um, you mustn't infringe uh, on the Gatwick airspace. So we're getting a bit squeezed here in terms of vertical altitude. Now we've got 117 decimal 9 on our, our VOR. We're not using the comms, are we? So you're saying, well, what's the second box for? And well, the answer is it's it's for it's a backup. So we can put uh, actually you see this is it. It's much better doing it with here. If I press N N2 and then plus and then N N oh, N2 N how do you get the small digits on the second one? Mm, that's interesting. You can get the... That's it, just kept pressing in 2. 17 decimal 9. Now, while well, I'm farting about doing that, you can see I'm drifted to the right. I'm going to take immediate corrective action, and I'm also 100 feet too high. So let's uh, show Willing. Gatwick Radar will have a beady eye on us. They'll be, they'll have a form, they'll have a complaints form out on their desk. And they'll have filled it in already with our registration number, and they'll just, they'll have a boy row. A, a biro? A biro. A biro poised, otherwise known as a biro, over the top of it, just waiting to write down something that we've done. Get us grounded. It's because I was following that mast. You know, I sort of got hypnotised by it. There we are. So now we're erring on the uh, or we're erring on the side of being left of Mayfield. It's actually only when we're right on Mayfield that it's going to make any difference. Is that going to go over there? Could be. Just on the, just here. I think it could be. But there's a key that centers this view. I'm going to find out what it is, if it kills me. So we've got 117.9 on here, so if I make it the active frequency, whoa, we've got another one of these. It doesn't have um, 
It doesn't have an up and downy meter, but it has a side to sidey meter, which is what we want. So if we tune it in, you'll see that it's saying the same. Well, if we put it, if we put it to the same radial as the top one, you'll see it's saying the same. So it's a backup, isn't it? Or you could even tune it to the um, to the next one. So we press Shift F10 and find out where the next one is. Goodwood 11475. So we put this on. Uh, one one four seven five make that the active frequency and then well they're probably going to turn west a bit for goodwood there we are so it's actually telling us that we're in range of the goodwood VOR and uh, if you want to you can even switch the DME onto the uh, R2 and it will give you the rangefinder on R2, on, on uh, Goodwood. This is packed full of navigation stuff, this plane. If you know how to use it, it's a pretty basic plane as well. Now, obviously, you just need to make sure you're not confused <laughs> about what you're navigating towards. So we're 4.6 miles from Mayfield. We didn't ident it, did we? We should have done, really. Let's see from the... Let's do that again. M-A-Y. We should get... M-A-Y. Now I know A is dot dash. So I know the middle of that is um is A. So it's something something A something. And as I said last time, if you look at the um if you look at the chart or any one of the books that you take with you when you're flying, they do have the Morse code in it. Da 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 da. Why? First thing I ever saw. First bit of scenery I think they ever put into flight simulator was um was a mast. <sighs> that was a weird. I was just driving along. I was in Essex. I think it was Essex or Suffolk. It was Suffolk. I was just driving along in Suffolk one day and I saw this massive great mast in real life. And um, I looked in it and I thought, I know that mast. Where am I? Oh, but I, I'd never been there before. Never been there before. First time I was on holiday. I said to my wife, and we've, I don't know, we've never been here before, have we? She said, oh, there's something spooky about that mast. It just sort of just seemed to know it. She seemed to recognise it. It's like I've seen it before, like Close Encounters of the Third Kind it was. Close Encounters, I was just drawn towards it. And then I thought, I know, I know what that mast is. And it was some of the very, very first scenery. I'm just going to switch to the next VOR. It was some of the very first scenery that um, had ever appeared in Flight Simulator. And it was literally a line, just, just a single line drawn at the, at the correct coordinates and on the correct scale so it was the correct height and so and it could be seen you know from a way away can we see Gatwick? I could do if I could just angle the window up here no okay not to worry we don't want to see Gatwick do we? no So you get we're in trouble. 
Yeah, so I was just driving past it, and then I thought, I know where I've seen that before. And the reason why I knew it was because I used to fly, as you do in your local area, so I flew in London and the South East, and it was the only bit of scenery. These are the days when the, the uh, ground was green, uniform green, and the towns were yellow. Can you believe that? The towns were actually just a yellow shape on the ground. Yellow. And I used to take off, because it was a nice trip, it was about the right sort of trip. I used to take off and used to fly north into Suffolk and find this line. You could fly around it. You had to use a lot of imagination in those days. I used to fly around it a couple of times and then, and then find my way back. Because half the fun of flight sim is the navigation, isn't it? Is that an airfield down there? No, I don't think so. Looks like it would make a nice air strip, wouldn't it? So, I was halfway through a Frieda check. So, so we've got a f we did the fuel, didn't we? Yeah. The radio, we're not using, but the radio nav is working fine. The engine is all these things, that's all working fine. The DI, we press D, see it's just gone slightly out of uh, phase there. And the AI is the, is the altimeter, A is altimeter. And to coordinate that we press B, believe it or not. And that's changed as well, because the regional pressure settings changed. Now why do these change? Let's just check on well, I think we could probably start climbing up a bit now. We're going to want to climb up because we're going to go over the sea in a minute onto the Isle of Wight. The reason why this changes is because it's driven by a gyroscope. You see it's vacuum powered. And the vacuum pulls the air through the gyroscope and spins it up. But gyroscopes are, while they're, they are accurate, uh, when you're turning gently and, and over short periods of time, they're not accurate if you're turning steeply or over long periods of time. So over a long period of time, you just need to um, realign it. I'm going to put some uh, speed on, but I'm climbing. I'm going to climb at about 750 feet a minute, which is like a sort of quite. A, it, it's not a maximum climb. I'm not. I'm not going to hammer my way back up to 2,500 feet. Should really put the mixture in rich when you're climbing. I'd like to tell you this is turbulence, but it's not, it's just me. So what we want to do, we want to sort of climb and but still maintain forward speed at the same time, don't we? So this thing gets out of uh, kilter because it's uh, vacuum powered. And the altimeter, really, well I mean, how, how does a plane tell you how high it is? How does it know? And the answer is, you know, if you think it sort of fires a beam at the ground, and um, and measures uh, sort of the time it takes the laser beam to return. You'd be you'd be completely wrong. <laughs> well, at least you would in this plane. Um, some jets do that. If you think um, it gets its height from uh, satellites, you'd also be wrong. The way it gets its height is from the pressure of the air because as the as you go up air pressure decreases and so measuring air pressure is an excellent way of um, measuring vertical height there's only one drawback and that is that air pressure changes all the time as you know yourself if you've got a barometer no two days are usually the same so in order to know what the air pressure is at say 2500 feet you need to know what the air pressure is on the ground, otherwise it's useless, isn't it? So what you're doing when you're when you're dialing this in, it's called the QNH. Don't ask me why it's called the QNH. There's a, there's a series of Q codes. They're all called Q. It doesn't stand for anything. And QNH is the barometric or air pressure on the ground. 
And basically, if you tell this thing what the ground pressure is, it will helpfully tell you how high you are. Because it knows how much the pressure drops off for every thousand feet. You can see the Isle of Wight in the background there, can't you? Also see some horrible clouds as well. Now, in the same way as the barometric pressure in one place changes from day to day, you don't have a uniform barometric pressure all over the country. You have weather systems, high pressure areas, low pressure areas. And so as you fly, because you're moving re reasonably quickly between regions, you'll, um, the, the air pressure will change. In fact, it, it varies infinitely. But um, you couldn't be setting it every 10 yards or so. So what happens is the country is divided into regions. And the uh, regions are, each region has a pressure setting. And everyone agrees to use the same pressure setting in that region. And that way uh, all the planes are, are separated correctly. The, the ones that are flying 3,000 feet are 1,000 feet away from the ones that are flying at 2,000 feet because they're all using the same pressure setting. And it's important that you do all use the same pressure setting. Otherwise you'll, you won't be at um, the altitude you think you are. You'll think you're at, you're at 2,500 feet and you might be at 1,000 feet. There's a saying in aviation, from high to low, beware below. And that's uh, if you're flying from a high pressure setting to a low pressure setting, what happens is as the pressure is dropping as you're flying, you're dropping. You're flying down the, the gradient. So if uh, you're flying into a low pressure area, you must readjust your barometer to the low pressure to read the correct altitude. And what are we going to do with this cloud? I'm going to turn right because I don't want to fly straight into it. I'd rather um, leave the VOR track and navigate visually and, and stay safe than uh, stick with the... V well, I mean, in future, perhaps we will um, do a bit of VOR flying. and uh, it might <laughs> The future might be about two minutes away, um, depending on these clouds. But no, I think there's a little gap there. There's a nice little thing. You want to pick a little gap, don't you? It's not a little gap, just fly through the little gap. So high to low, but where below? Always use the regional pressure setting. Now I think you probably spotted uh, the airfield. I mean, this is not the airfield we're going to land at. This is Goodwood. Goodwood, home of the Goodwood race course, horse racing course. It's just heavy mist. There we are. And Goodwood also home to the Goodwood VOR. And it's not 39 miles away. Oh, it might be 39 miles away. That's because that's not Goodwood. Okay, let's not go there. Now, with my extensive knowledge of local airfields, I can say with 100% certainty that it's possibly Shoreham. You can see that because of the river. Can you see that? See the river coming in there? Well, rivers don't come in, do they? Of course they don't. They go out. See the river going out there? That's Shoreham. Yeah, now look, let's just get this sorted out, okay? Let's not panic. The last thing you can do when you're flying in a plane is panic. panic. <laughs> uh, we've got Delling in here. Why have we got Delling in here? I don't know. Let's just put Shoreham in. Not Shoreham. Let's put Goodwood in, okay? Let's just find out what direction to steer. 
to get to Goodwood. Let's note with relief that it's 16 miles away and not a 39. Let's note with relief that we um, haven't infringed uh, Shoreham's airspace or Gatwick's and apply the first rule of flying. Actually the second rule. The first rule of flying is don't die. Safety, very safety conscious flying is. People hate dying. And the second rule is if nobody knows about it, it didn't happen. 